Hi there friends! This week was Earth Day and I have an Earth Day related story to share once again. This book is called Plant a Pocket of Prairie. It is written by Phyllis Root and illustrated by Betsy Bowen, both author and illustrator from Minnesota. So a lot of these plants and animals to those of us in Minnesota or the Midwest may be quite familiar. So keep your eyes peeled for which ones you recognize. And I wanted to share that in the beginning of the book, they have some facts about prairies. So they do mention that our country of the United States of America used to make be made up of 40% prairie. Our prairies are now endangered. So that is why it is so important for us to continue planting what we might find in our prairies. Let's get started. Once prairies stretched for thousands of miles. An ocean of flowers and grasses, a sea of sky, home for bison and elk, prairie chickens, burrowing owls, five line skinks, plains garter snakes, and auto skipper butterflies. Almost all gone now to farm and town and city, even before we knew all the things a prairie could do. But if you want to see what a prairie might be, what might you do? Plant a pocket of prairie in your backyard or boulevard or boxes on a balcony. If you plant a pocket of prairie, who might come? Plant foxglove beard tongue, a ruby-throated hummingbird might hover and sip and thrum. If that hummingbird sips and zips looking for something more to eat. Plant butterfly weed, monarch butterflies might lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves. And when those monarchs eggs hatch and the larvae turn into hungry butterflies. Plant rough blazing star. Great spangled fritillaries might show up too. If monarch and fritillaries aren't enough for you, plant asters. Silvery checker spot butterflies might lay their eggs on the leaves. Your pocket of prairie might be full of blooming and buzzing and fluttering, but don't stop now. Plant purple cone flowers and joe pie weed and wait for Dakota skippers and swallowtails to flit and feed. While you are waiting, plant goldenrod. A great plains toad might flick its tongue at goldenrod soldier beetles. Not enough prairie for you yet? Plant cup plants. A thirsty chickadee might come to drink from a tiny leaf pool. Plant big blue stem and Indian grass. Grasshoppers might eat the grass before grasshopper mice eat the grasshoppers. More prairie still? Plant sunflowers and goldfinches might dine upside down. Plant bottle gentian. A bumblebee might battle inside, leaving only its bumblebee bottom sticking out. If your pocket of prairie grows big enough, Plant prairie milkweed and hairy mountain mint and breathe sweet air. A dick sisal might build a nest and lay four pale blue eggs. A prairie skink might guard her eggs beneath a rock. A meadowlark might fly calling, chee 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 chee. If your pocket of prairie grows bigger still, who else might come? Who knows? What does that look like? If you plant a pocket of prairie and I plant a pocket of prairie and everyone we know plants a pocket of prairie and everyone they know plants a pocket of prairie, one day we might look out and see the prairie coming home. Thank you.
There's some more fun information in this book, so I highly recommend it. I'm not going to read all of it because it might get a little long for some of us. Um, so I hope this was inspiring for you, and if you have anything to share about how you're celebrating the Earth lately, or any um, prairie plants that you have in your yard or that you're planning on planting this year, let me know. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you all later. Bye.